we've got our next example. This time it's just straight up graphic approach, right? There's nothing to analyze. I didn't give you any formulas to plug in, nothing you can put into your graphing calculator. This is a graphical approach. So let's see if we can relate function g of x to f of x. So you can see that they have the same shape, right? There's a line and then there's part of a parabola, right? You could think of this as a piecewise function. Line, part of a parabola, line, part of a parabola. But I think you'll take note that if you had f and you kind of squished it, you would get to g of x, right? I have to squish it. And then we gotta figure out what is that squish factor? So let's take a look at their domains. See if we can start to answer this question. All right, because I'm compressing things, right? It, imagine you were here and you had like a, I don't know, a big piece of wood and you just pushed everything here, it could compress, right? If you compressed, if you squished F, you would get to G. All right, so the domain of F, if I look left to right along the X axis, you can see I start here at zero, zero, that's my leftmost point. I end here at six, four, that's my rightmost point but I only care about the x-axis, so I'm going from zero to six. So I should specifically say, let me erase this, this is the domain of f, because we do have two functions we're keeping track of, so I wanna show you the domain of f. On the flip of that, let's take a look at the domain of g. Okay, so g goes from 0, 0, and then it goes to 4, right? So where this rightmost point was 6, 4, this one is 2, 4. And they're both starting at 0, 0, okay. But the domain here is 0 to 2. And I think you'll give me that the domain going from f of x to g of x, it's a third as small, right? The domain of g, it's only two units long, where the domain of f was six units long. Or you can think of it as from here to here, it's a third, right? Or from here to here, it's three times as much. So how do we figure out the compression factor? Well, when you're getting compressed horizontally, all right, if you're gonna get compressed, oops, we won't put the therefore just yet. If you're gonna get compressed horizontally, g of x would be f of some function here. Now we're gonna call this bx, all right? So whenever you're compressed, or stretched horizontally, as we saw in example two, you'll have a multiplier inside your parentheses, inside your grouping symbol. And it's a little counterintuitive, so this is how it works. You'll see it takes me six units to get through my domain on F, but it only took me two units to get through my domain on G. So G is three times as fast as F of X. So G of X moves three times as fast as f of x because it took f of x six units to complete its graph and it only took g of x two units. So this multiplier that goes here is going to be three. So you would say g of x was equal to f of three x. That's how we transform that function. Okay, And let's summarize that as we start to end this section. So let me scooch this up so we can see the paragraph or the box. There we go. Okay, so given a function f of x, a new function, g, which is f of bx, right? Take note, the multiplier is inside the grouping symbol where b is a constant, is a horizontal stretch or a horizontal compression of the function f of x. If b is greater than one, then the graph will be compressed by one over b. All right, and we saw that, right? We had a compression of about one third, right? We went from six units to three units, so it was one third as small, right? One third, so b was three. If b is between zero and one, then the graph will be stretched by one over b. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit later on. If b is less than zero, then there's going to be a combination of a horizontal stretch or compression in combination with the horizontal reflection. But we'll talk about reflections in a little bit later example. Actually, we're gonna talk about it in the next example. So we'll, we'll be touching, ba or touching uh, on this idea as well. Okay, so with that, we've taken a look at 
vertical stretching and shrinking when the multiplier is outside the function. And we've took, taken a look at horizontal stretching and shrinking or horizontal stretching and compressing where the multiplier is inside the function. All right, so the next example, we're gonna look at reflections over the X and Y axis. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.